Greetings, everyone. Greetings from northeastern Virginia. It is late on the evening of uh, September 11th, and I wanted to update my vlog by sharing one metaphor, one idea, one potential trend about AI. And I should say that with me is one of the cats. Ash the cat likes to uh, climb here on my office chair and keep me company. Um, so imagine that. There, there she is. There she is. She's behind me still. She likes to photobomb uh, whenever I'm making media. The idea I'd like to have you think about with me is the idea of AI as ghosts. And let me explain where I'm coming from for this. Uh, I come from thinking about ghosts in part because I have a PhD in literature where I worked on Gothic literature. I've done research on Gothic. I've taught classes on it. And so ghosts are something I know a little bit about. But I mean them here metaphorically for AI. And this idea came to me last week. It came to me, it wouldn't let go, so I wanted to share it with you. It came to me in a conversation with uh, some folks. We were in a library workshop, and they were describing their house filled with AI digital assistants, and how in different rooms they had uh, different assistants with different names, different voices, two different software platforms, and they had a whole mix of keywords they used, and in effect, they'd populated their house with all these AI and so they could walk from room to room and my first thought was it's like your house is haunted. Now I, I don't mean that in a derogatory way, I don't mean that as a criticism. I mean that was just my, my first thought that I could walk through their house and I would hear voices, I wouldn't see something, they'd, they'd be disembodied entities and again I thought ghosts. And the more I thought about this, the more I thought this is one way that we kind of experience AI. Uh, so, for example, you know, thinking about these home assistants, uh, Alexa, Cortana, Google Home, and so on, you could also think about some of the AI-generated voices that we hear on phones as part of phone response systems. Uh, on Amazon, we get to read the works of all kinds of AI ghosts, that is, AI-generated content that people have slapped an EPUB onto and pushed out into the world. We could think as well about uh, large language model generated images that we can see throughout the web in different places, including video content and, of course, PowerPoint presentations. Uh, and these are you know, fictional made up images, um, in a sense, uh, inhabitants, co inhabitants of this world with us. We can think about political deepfakes, where we're seeing some kind of twist on a politician who gets to appear in a different guise or in a different location for a different purpose. And of course, we have uh, pornified deepfakes of women, which are increasing in number. And we can think as well about the huge volume of AI-generated writing and everything from emails to websites uh, to phishing and scam attempts. Uh, in, in short, we, we're populating our world with ever more of these artificial intelligence characters. And if we think about them in this sense, then it helps us think about why we've done it. Uh, a lot of these are based on convenience, uh, everything from you know my ability to walk into a room and with my voice command lights to go up or down or for a bot to answer my questions. There's some greater efficiency in this depending on, on where things go. So for example, uh, voices in phone trees help uh, save time for uh, people who got human beings get to answer the call. There's also the, the need of loneliness some large proportion of the human race experiences loneliness and turns to many sources in order to alleviate that, including television, where you can turn on a TV and populate your space with the two-dimensional simulacra and voices of, of other people. And there are, there are other interpersonal functions. I mean, we use these ghosts to persuade other people. They fulfill romantic objects for us, if you think about a tool like Replica. Uh, they give us some emotional support at times, or just companionship. Now, the more I thought about this, the more it seemed that we have a, that it's it's a world which is digital, but it's also a world that's intertwined with the non-digital. That is, you know, I walk across a room, and there might not be any screens there at all, but I can summon up a voice from my phone or from a device sitting on a wall. Uh, you can see this in your car, for example, uh, or if you have headphones on, wherever you go on Earth. 
it's it's pretty obvious that the internet is intertwined deeply with the physical world which means our digital ghosts now haunt us all in all our analog spaces and this may go still further if you think about this a lot of the spaces where this haunting is happening where these AI ghosts inhabit uh, are the most demographically advanced places in the world that is the nations or populations or communities which have gone through the demographic transition which means they're producing fewer and fewer children living longer their age bracket is or their median age is, is advancing so it may be that some of these spaces are depopulating we think of say Japan or South Korea or large sections of the rural world uh, perhaps we are populating these spaces for companionship and maybe looking forward uh, if this trend continues, the demographic transition continues, we might see more and more of these ghosts. Now, I, let me just press on the ghost theme a bit more. Uh, often, in my understanding, ghosts are historical. That is, they are from the past. They represent some past characters, some past trauma, some past crisis. Uh, they want to draw attention to something that has happened. You know, famously in popular culture, that might be a murder, some kind of unjust crime. Uh, sometimes people go to a location which is fraught with horrible death, uh, such as a battlefield. And there is that sense that AI draws upon that, because AI is largely historical. That is, the software is trained on large data sets that are assembled from mostly from the web. And again, these are documents, you know, Reddit boards, Reddit discussions, blog posts, web pages. So in a sense, these AI ghosts are acting as ectoplasmic ghosts and drawing on the past. There's another sense, too, that this can be uncanny. And, you know, viewers are encouraged to Google the phrase, the uncanny valley. But the key thing to th keep in mind here is that ghosts are human-like, but not human. You know, there's something wrong with them. Uh, depending on how you see them in folklore or fiction or in popular culture, they may be semi-translucent, you know, they may not have a strong physical uh, presence in the world. They may be invisible and completely a voice. There's something which makes us think they are human-like, but not quite human. And again, that works for AIs. When AIs convince us for a while that they're human-like, when I'm interacting with Gemini, for example, I can have a conversation for a bit, until it doesn't work out, until it breaks and the illusion is suspended. You know, I can generate something amazing on mid-journey, but when an error appears or something that's unnaturally uh, depicted or something that's perhaps unpleasantly surreal, then I will be broken out of the illusion. Again, that, that sense of being human-like, but not fully human. There's also the way that ghosts are uh, positive. Uh, they, they represent a, a voice from a previous time. They may be instructive. Uh, they may be somebody that we can assist. And of course, there are all kinds of kids' stories, you know, Casper the Friendly Ghost, uh, where we can think about ghosts that really uh, appeal to us, that help us out or we help them, but for a positive experience. We can think about the wonderful movie Her, where we have a character who is, in a sense, deeply lonely, but also haunted. And the operating system and the parlance of the movie gets to assist him. Again and again, I think we are going to find our world that is full of these ghosts, and it's worth thinking about, worth pushing on, worth trying to understand and explore. Well, that's my idea for this evening. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope all is well. Greetings from my hard-sleeping cat, and we'll see you next time.